Hello, Namaskar and a very good morning to all the viewers watching our sessions out there. This is Simran Singh and you are watching this particular live telecast on eVidya channel number 6 to 12. Besides, we have so many different mediums through which you all can connect with us. You can participate in our live interactive sessions. One of the other mediums is our YouTube channel. As you all know, it is NCR official. So it's around 11 a.m. on your watch and from 11 a.m. till 12 in the noon, we have a special session for all of you which is based on demonstration of virtual lab experiment on Diksha and e Shala augmented reality or AR content. As we all know that laboratory work is very important for the understanding of each and every child, not only for the theoretical framework, but also to comprehend the concepts related to the practical outputs. And virtual labs, they provide and ensure a quality access to education for every individual and specifically for the students. So, providing us more guidance and insights into today's conversation, we have with us our three experts. So, allow me to introduce you with the guest for today's session. Here in the conversation in studio, we are joined by Dr. Yashpal Sharma. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, Simranji, and namaskar to all of you. Good morning. Sir is serving as an academic consultant at CIET and CRT. Welcome you, sir. Then we also have with us our two experts who have connected via online modality. One of them is Ms. Shri Kalapi. Namaskar, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, ma'am is a project manager from Amrita Create. Then we also have with us Ms. Reshma Boss. Namaskar. We welcome you as well. Ma'am is a research coordinator at Amrita Create. So viewers in this live interactive session, if you have any of the queries, you feel like asking us anything, then do mention it in the comment section of our YouTube channel that is NCRT official. Besides, there is a contact number that is flashing on your screens. So feel free to give us a call at 8800-440-559. And a specific mail ID for all of you is again flashing on your screens. dth.class12 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So let's begin this interesting conversation on virtual labs and augmented reality. So sir, in the first place, I'll request you to apprise our viewers more about the AR content. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simranji. And um, namaskar to all of you once again. So uh, as uh, National Education Policy 2020 has given us the insight that the futuristic content like augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, 3D content that all should be used in the teaching learning process so that the learner can better understand the concept. So keep it in mind all these few, CIT and CRT is always at the forefront of developing this type of content and we have developed e Partshala augmented reality app where you can perform these simulations in augmented reality by using your mobile devices and apart from that we have developed a virtual lab in collaboration with the CDAC Mumbai and Amrita University and all these content are available on the Diksha portal. Okay, so let's uh, start with the e Partshala augmented reality app. So basically what is augmented reality? That uh, as far as education is concerned that you are going to teach one concept and with the help of some 3D software and simulations that concepting being augmented and presented to the user in their own environment. You definitely have gone through the different augmented reality apps like one um, uh, might be your children are using that augmented reality filters to face up uh, uh, many things on their face and we are using the same technology for teaching learning process. So the app is available on Play Store. So let me uh, show you, let me share my screen. So you are able to see my mobile phone. So as I said that content is available on uh, um, Play Store. So let's go to the Play Store. And then uh, because currently this app is available only for Android users. So here you can search uh, e Partshala AR. Okay, so this is the app. You can install this app on your mobile phone and then you can play the simulation seamlessly. And any mobile phone having the version 
uh, Android version more than 4.1, they can uh, use this mobile uh, app uh, ePartial Augmented Reality. So this is quite simple. When you open this app, so it has a very simple menu. Here you can see we have uh, some small filters over there where you can choose your class then you can choose uh, the subject and chapter and topic okay so say for example i'm taking from class 10 and uh, you can choose the chapter because uh, currently we have the simulations from the class 9th and 10th for secondary classes and in science and then select the uh, simulations which are available in different chapters okay so for example i'm taking this time the chapter number 10 okay so now within chapter number 10 i will be taking the concepts so these are the concepts which are currently available so for example if i am taking the concept 10.3 a and b so if i click on this one i need to load the activity it's a quite a 4 to 5 mb simulation that we are downloading uh, directly from the internet okay then till that time it's a uh, downloading then I will have my, uh, you require the NCRT textbook because we have embed and synchronize this concept with the NCRT textbook, okay. So you require one NCRT textbook, it does not matter if you have the soft copy, if you have the hard copy, uh, it will work for seamlessly on any uh, of the, you know, version of the uh, textbook that you have. So currently I have this hard copy with me. So the concept that I am going to discuss is from class 10 and this is the class 10 science textbook and the chapter I have taken is the 10 that is the light re reflection and rarefaction which is on page number 160. So let us move to page number 160. So here the simulation that I have taken is 10.3. So this is the simulation. Since it is downloaded on my app you can see the camera is automatically open because this is a very peculiar feature of using the augmented reality when you are using any augmented reality app the camera will automatically be open now i need to scan this image so let's scan this image learning objectives to perform an activity to observe what happens when a ray of light is incident parallel to the principal axis in spherical mirrors, click on the continue button to continue. Okay, so now you can see that this simulation is live on your mobile phone to perform. Now, if you wanted, you may close the textbook because only once you need to scan it. Once you close the textbook, you can see as I said in the definition of augmented reality that I am going to teach the concept of uh, one concept. This is the concept that I am going to teach and with the help of some software simulations that concept is being augmented and presented to the user in their own environments. Now this simulation is a part of my environment. I am able to see the textbook also. So if you want to remove this hindrance, we have put one AR camera at the bottom. There is one button. You click on this one and then you can perform your simulation seamlessly. So this is quite a uh, very interactive simulation you can zoom in zoom out and you follow the instructions and as uh, you have listened that the voiceover is also embedded to guide the learner or the teacher. Ray of light. A ray is a path of a light wave represented by a line with an arrow. The arrow indicates the direction in which light is traveling beam of light. A bundle of rays of light is called a beam of light. Principal axis. It is a line passing through the center of curvature C and pole P of the mirror. Since principal axis passes through the center of curvature, it is normal to the surface of the mirror. Click on the continue button to continue. Okay, so here some of the definition of the point are given to have a better understanding about this that what we are going to do. Click on any button from the side panel to learn more about it. So now we can perform two activities, one by using the concave mirror and another by using the 
convex mirror. So let's first start with the concave mirror. Concave mirror. Click on the highlighted button to make a ray incident parallel to the principal axis. So click on the source of light. Drag the slider to set the black screen where it gets the image of the reflected rays of light. So drag the slider slowly. You will be able to see that is going to be changed that where actual image is formed. If Recording you... in progress. Okay, so you can see. So in 3D, basically you can see uh, say for example, in 2D, we are unable to understand about which mirror it is, okay, where it's a, you know, it, it's a convex or it's a concave, where here you can see the surface of the mirror and you are able to identify. Now perform the second for, uh, by using this uh, convex mirror. Convex mirror, click on the highlighted button to make a ray incident parallel to the principal axis. So click on the source of light. Convex mirror, a beam of light is incident parallel to the principal axis on a convex mirror. After reflection, a virtual, erect and highly diminished image appears to be formed at the principal focus of the convex mirror. Laws of reflection 1. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. 2. The incident ray, the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. Click on the continue button. 2. The real image is always obtained in front of the mirror and the virtual image appears to be behind the mirror. Click on the continue learning outcome. We can observe that a ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection will pass through the principal focus in the case of a concave mirror or appears to diverge from the principal focus in the case of a convex mirror. Okay, so you have seen in the simulations that we have performed this activity by using the augmented reality content through the ePartshala augmented reality app and maybe before going to the actual lab, you can hands on virtually and then you acquire that skill to do it physically in your labs. Now over to you Simranji. Of course, sir. thank you so much. It is uh, pretty interesting to know these minute concepts and develop a kind of understanding regarding virtual labs and how we all can use that. So uh, proceeding in the conversation we have with us are another guest. I would like to invite uh, Ms. Srikala Madam in the conversation to apprise our viewers more about the different kind of simulations. Yeah, Srikala Madam. All right, so viewers, we are watching this session on Evidya channel number 6 to 12. In case if you have any of the queries, then feel free to write down to us in the comment section of NCRT official. So it is a very special oh. segment that we have uh, started from the past 5 to 6 days on demonstration of virtual lab experiments on Diksha and e Shala augmented reality content. So, before we proceed ahead, uh, sir, I have a little question for you. Sir, uh, when we talk about virtual labs, uh, uh, why are we including this concept now in the educational curriculum of our students? Why is it so important? Yeah, uh, because the technology is changing here and there every time when we have new technology. So, definitely we wanted that all these technologies, how they can help in teaching learning process. And uh, uh, because of COVID also, because it's a good start to have all these virtual content, and uh, many schools don't have the physical labs in their schools. So it's a possibility that they can do this simulation virtually. And if they do have the lab, physical lab in their schools, so before going to these labs, they can perform the simulation virtually, acquire that skills and then go to the physical lab. So in both way, it's a very important students to understand the concept. And there are many things in the lab like when we are handling the chemicals in the actual lab or the dissections of the different animals. So if we try, try every time, so definitely a large number of resources that we are depleting. So 
if we do it virtually and acquire these skills and then we go to the physical lab so definitely that's very important for students and since now we have all these technologies so we are developing all this content and it's a good thing that all content is available on the diksha itself and uh, sir i do believe that the best part is that we also have the guided instructions for every simulation <coughs> that we do for every experiment that we are practicing so uh, let's have i another speaker shrikala madam in the conversation to inform our viewers more about different kinds of simulations so shrikala ma'am am i audible if i am please respond back please unmute yourself okay i think we are facing a bit of a minor technical glitch but as of now uh, we have so many questions for you sir yes definitely uh, so of course we would like to know more uh, from you on the purpose of virtual labs um, how uh, when we talk about ict integration the integration of uh, information communication technology it has become more evident and advanced after covid 19 after this unprecedented crisis so what do you think has changed uh, in the educational scenario so far yeah definitely a uh, lot things has been changed because uh, one of the mandate of the ncert is also the training yeah so uh, before covid when we have this training so people in, in, in fact uh, ict always uh, is a core part of training at the cit so why we have seen that the people are more interested the teacher are more interested after this covid and during the covid and if you compare it to the before covid so definitely uh, this virtual things are very important and ict take an edge to have all these things uh, available virtually and integration of ict and the different type of content in teaching learning process is definitely is the core of the teaching learning process and of now course. the teachers are taking more interest that how they can even we have the physical classes right mm. now but still many things which are going to be as a you know in virtual mode still going on so so one of the another or i should say the major challenges that has also arrived in front of us is that the teachers were not much tech savvy back then True. but uh, particularly when we are talking about virtual labs the kind of training uh, so how can teachers get this hands on experience so that they could pass on to their students and per se parents as well they could help out the children in that definitely it's uh, very important to know that how things work in virtual laboratories or in virtual lab also the same things is happening that's why cit has uh, implemented this uh, virtual lab in all the training modes and uh, i think this is our uh, uh, well, last time we also completed last week uh, five uh, uh, in five sessions on how to use this virtual lab and augmented reality and before this i think a few months back we have to we had two cycles uh, for the different teachers that how they can actually use these labs and uh, uh, maybe uh, we have more cycles that to involve the teachers so that they they can they are able to use these labs fluently in their teaching learning process of course so and uh, once again i would like to invite our next speaker in the conversation shrikala madam uh, yes ma'am please do respond we are waiting for your response and for your inputs regarding our different kinds of simulations thank you niti thank you for the introduction yeah ma'am you may proceed are you able to hear me and of course ma'am you are completely yeah. audible and visible to us yeah yeah okay so let's start so let me start with uh, a bit about the introduction and importance of virtual labs so as you all know a uh, few one two years back we were all stuck in uncertainty and uh, students and teachers they completely lost access to the physical labs and uh, those days when stem education is when the practicals in the stem education is so important so those days these o labs and virtual labs were the only platform where the country could actually practice and learn uh, the science uh, science so the nep 2020 the national education policy 2020 they have recommended and they have given great importance to create more contents on uh, the virtual labs because with an intention and motive that every student in every corner of india whether he has access to resources physical lab resources or not they should be able to completely learn the practical skill sets 
rather than just confining to the theory mode of science education. So that's where the importance of virtual labs lies in today's context. Because the st in, in, phys in physical labs, there are limitations that uh, the students can only practice it during their, uh, like their, uh, that particular period and they just leave it. But in virtual labs or like virtual labs, which is old labs, they can do the experiment any times at any pace they want. That is why the government has insisted and we have put all these virtual labs onto the Diksha vertical, where the students and teachers can practice it, learn using it, teach using it at their own pace from their comforts of wherever, from their own comforts. Yeah. So let me start with uh, the demonstration. So let us first see how to access the Diksha portal. Hope my screen is visible to all of you. So to access the Diksha portal, you can use any browser. Type www.diksha.government.in Yeah, so this is the landing page uh, or the Diksha, landing page for the Diksha platform. And you can see a lot of initiatives from NCRT and various other uh, government agencies are kind of, they have uh, uploaded it onto this Diksha vertical. And you could see a lot of banners here. So let us go, go select Diksha, uh, virtual labs. So this is, this directs you to the virtual labs. You can see an explore icon here. Click on the explore icon. That will direct you to the virtual labs landing page. So here there are there is about virtual labs which mention uh, about what is what are virtual labs and what is the importance of virtual labs etc. And how we, how much we are aligned with the NCRT curriculum etc. All are mentioned here in the about virtual labs content. Below you could see the virtual labs e content where all the e contents that we provide are listed class wise. That is, we provide the contents from grade 6 to grade 12 now. Yeah. So, let me start first with the physics experiment for class 12. So, you could see here class 12. Click on the explore icon. Scroll down. You can see Hindi and English medium. So, now as of now, we, have not, we are not providing Hindi medium, which will be available very soon. So, now click on the English medium icon. Then, it will list the subjects that we are providing, the so subjects we are providing for this particular class. Let's click on the physics. This will, yeah. So this will direct you to the physics experiment page on the Diksha portal. So today I am going to show Ohm's law. So once you are in this page, you can see in the right side, the experiments will be listed. All the experiments for class 12 which are available on the Diksha portal will be listed. So I am going to show determined resistance per unit length of a wire which is nothing but Ohm's law. So for every experiment you can see two sections are given. One is experiment PDF which is nothing but if you click on this it will direct you to the screen which is the complete lab manual resources for that particular experiment. Okay, now let's go to the simulation part. So click on, go to the explanation resources, click on this one, determine resistance per unit length of a wire. Scroll up, it will show a screen. <laughs> Hope someone is, uh, has unmuted, kind of. Yeah. Uh, all the other speakers who might have joined through the meeting, uh, we request you to please mute yourselves. Yeah, so that uh, Shrikala ma'am could unmute herself and present the content for us. Yes, uh, Shrikala ma'am, you may continue. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Uh, Shrikala ma'am, if I am audible, please respond back. Yeah, yeah, you are audible to me, you are audible to Yes ma'am, you may continue. Yeah, I'm muted. Yeah, okay. 
So the uh, we'll be on the screen. So from here, select this link, determine resistance per unit length of a wire. So we are on the virtual labs experiment page right now. So for every experiment, we provide theory. Inside the theory, the aim of that particular experiment will be given, which is to determine the resistance per centimeter of a given wire when potential difference by plotting potential difference versus current. Okay. In the theory part, all the theoretical aspects about that particular experiment and okay. formulas will be given. And also, we all the experiments on the Diksha vertical is strictly aligned with NCRT lab manual content. Therefore, those learning outcomes are stated here. Now, moving on to the procedure tab, the materials required to perform that particular experiment is given. Also, the simulation a simulator, the virtual lab simulator, we designed it with a motive that it should give the same user experience as that of doing performing the experiment in a real lab. Therefore, the real lab procedure is given and also the simulator procedure is given along with the observations, whatever observations will come into that particular experiment, etc. along with the results. Coming to animation, animation uh, is nothing but it's an animated video uh, briefing the entire theory concept of that experiment as well as the uh, procedure also on how to do, how to perform it in a simulator. You can watch the animation as many times you want before performing the simulator, which will give you a brief idea, which will give the user a brief idea on how to do it and practice it in simulator. Okay. Now there is a video demonstration as well, where, where it shows how to do this experiment in a real lab, a teacher practicing it in a real lab. So students can also watch this before performing the simulator. Next part is, it is very important that um, for the user or for the learner or the teacher to realize how, how much he or she has gained um, in concept wise after performing the experiment in simulator wise in simulator. So the Viva voice gives them an opportunity to self assess themselves about the on the knowledge level that they have gained. So we kind of have some 10 to 15 questions here where the students can attempt this after performing the simulation and if the scores are very really low they can practice it as many times they want so you can read the questions click on the answers finally give the submit icon here it will show it will show a tick mark if it is right and it will show a cross mark if it is wrong then next is the resources tab so whatever sources knowledge sources web or like physical sources that we have referred to prepare the contents for this experiment that is given in the resources tab. Next is the feedback tab. So we always value the user perspective and uh, we always keep on enhancing the um, uh, platform to make sure that the users are, users are satisfied with all the features available on the virtual labs. So here are a set of the questions to improve related to the platform and the user experience. And we take into account all these responses uh, and we do those improvements as and when required. Now coming to the simulator where the student actually performs the experiment. So this is that screen. On the left side you can see controls and slightly to right to that you could see the workbench where the student can perform the experiment. Okay, yeah. Now uh, this is Ohm's law. Ohm's law is nothing but we are finding out the resistance for a wire. Okay, this is the wire. We are going to find out the resistance for this particular wire given the potential difference and the current. Okay, so all, I think physics teachers will be here in this um, discussion. So you know the resistance of the particular wire, it depends on the material, it depends on the length of whichever conductor wire you are using, it determines on the diameter and also mainly the as, as the resistance of the rheostat varies, the conductivity also varies. So first let, let us select the material. Uh, so I am choosing gold here. You could see that the color of the wire has changed and it is now gold. Okay. Now I am adjusting this length of the wire. So the length of the wire has changed. If you adjust a bit more, it will, it will get increased again. Then the diameter resistance. Now let us do the uh, connections. So here you can see a click box. 
So when you click, it shows the circuit diagram. So whoever want to do it, looking at the circuit diagram, they can do like that, make the connections like that. Here there is a help tab as well, which shows the instructions, uh, step by step instructions on how to do it in a, how to do the connections. Now let's start doing the connections. Okay. Yeah. So I'm connecting the source to the emitter, emitter to the voltmeter, voltmeter to the upper terminal of the rheostat. Now down uh, terminal of the rheostat to the key, from the battery to the key, yes. Now we are going to find the resistance of this wire. So we have to connect this wire across the voltmeter. We have connected it, now insert the key. Yes, you will see once the rheostat, the, already there is a, we have fixed a value for the rheostat. So it is showing the reading, current is 0, 0 0.122 and 0, 0 0.1, 0, 0, 0, 0.005. So here is the tabulation column, you can insert these values. So the voltage value is 0 0.00005, yes. Now the current value is 0, 0, 0.122. Right, yes. So the resistance is 0 0.004. So the Ohm's law states how much ever the resistance varies, how much ever the potential difference in the current varies, the, the resistance of the wire should remain constant. So I'm a bit adjusting the resistance now. I'm a bit adjusting the rheostat. Now the value, let us record this as well. So the Voltage reading is, yes, and the current reading is, so the user get the chance to even input the values and check. So, yeah, so also the user can kind of like plot the graph, click on this graph icon, it will show a straight line. That is V is equal to IR, which is nothing but the current is proportional to the voltage and the resistance. That is what the experiment is about. Hope you have got an understanding about this experiment. Let us move to the chemistry. Again, go to the Diksha portal. Go to class 10. Click on the explore icon. Click the English medium. Go to science. I am showing to demonstrate the identify bleaching powder among given samples experiment. Go to explanation resources. Click on the uh, experiment name. It will direct you to the experiment page. Straight away I am jumping to simulator this time. Yeah, this is the simulation screen on the, this is the workbench. So on the left side you could see four samples. And through this experiment we are demonstrating, we are trying to demonstrate by identifying which of these solution is a bleaching powder. So by default solution A is placed here. So here also help tab is given. So those who want to perform it using help instruction, they can do it like that. So you can see a cotton cloth here. Drag it to the 50 ml solution. Take the four steps. Now Yeah, take the cloth using the tweezer. Now it is in the 20 ml dilute sulfuric acid solution. Take the glass rod, stir it. So you could see no change in the color of the cloth, which indicates there is no nascent oxygen produced in this reaction. Inference is given here. So now let us take solution C. Take the cloth, drop it into the solution. Take the tweezer. Move it to the sulfuric acid solution, take the glass rod, stir it. You could find the color of the cloth is changed, which indicates the production of the nascent oxygen in this reaction, which confirms that this solution contains bleaching powder. Okay, so we have clearly understood that solution C contains bleaching powder, whereas solution A doesn't. And also, while performing this in the physical lab, more, many of the chemical changes. Just because the reaction is 
bit dangerous. We are unable to perform it in the real labs. So the virtual labs provides an opportunity to for the student to kind of do any kind of experiment, even if it is a hazardous experiment, to visualize what really happens in that reaction. So that's also an important point, uh, like where the virtual labs contributes a lot. Also some phenomena which that cannot be demonstrated and is not visible to the real eye, that also can be demonstrated using virtual labs. Yeah. Now let's move quickly to the maths lab. Go to Diksha portal. Class 9, click on the explore icon, uh, go to English, click on mathematics. So I'll show you area of trapezium today. Click on that particular experiment, go to explanation resources, scroll up, the screen will be visible. Click on the experiment. Let's straight away move to the simulator this time. So now we are going to demonstrate area of a trapezium. So through this experiment, what we are going to show is the area of a trapezium is equal to half the product of its altitude and some of its parallel sides. Okay, now go to the, click on the start icon here. This is the workbench for really performing the experiment. And you should know math, we, we students, do, students do learn theories, teachers do teach theories. But to really understand what is the concept behind those theories is theory or axiom is really important for the student to get really interested to that particular subject. So virtual labs provides an opportunity for the students to really understand what is actually the concept behind the theory and axioms that they learn. And also also the formulas, how those formulas came in, what is what is the real concept behind it, all those. So now let's click on draw trapezium. So you could see a trapezium is now created in the workbench. Now we, we need a replica of this trapezium. Click on this, a replica will be formed. So we now have two trapezium. One is ABCD and one is PQRS. So okay, next step is we have to just tilt it. So click it and it got tilted. Now place this SR. Now it, it got tilted. Now place this side RQ line to side BC of trapezium ABCD. Okay. Now what we find is it has formed into a parallelogram. The ABCD trapezium and also the PQRS trapezium combined they have formed a parallelogram ASDP. Right. So the observation is that this parallelogram ASPD is the combination of the two trapezium, which is A, B, C, D and also the P, Q, R, S. Click next. And area of this A, B, C, D trapezium is always half the area of the parallelogram, which is A, S, P, D. Hence proved that the area of the this trapezium is half the product of its altitude and some of its parallel sites. So that's all from my side. Hope the audience have got a clear understanding about how to access the Diksha portal and the importance of Diksha portal and the virtual labs and also on the experiments. Now, thank you for the opportunity and let me welcome my colleague Reshma ma'am uh, to demonstrate on the biology and also the English experiments. Thank you. Of course, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for explaining it at length about the different simulations and the experimentations of science and uh, mathematics. And I'm pretty sure that all the viewers watching this session, they must be very clear with the concept of Ohm's law. Then identifying bleaching powder among sample solutions and uh, followed by that, the area of trapezium. Thanks a lot. So in the conversation, we have our next speaker here. I would like to invite Ms. Reshma Vos, Research Coordinator at Amrita Create. Ma'am, please guide us more on the different simulations present on the Diksha platform. Yeah. So, hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you are. And a very warm welcome to everyone present here. And a happy new year, since we are meeting first time after new year. Yeah. Today, I will be showing biology experiment and English experiment. So, I know the teachers are present here. So, what is the goal of a teacher? To promote learning, the desire in children to learn the concept. And keeping this in mind, the virtual labs were created. 
Uh, Srikala has explained beautifully on how to uh, use the Deeksha platform to access the virtual labs. I'll take you through the biology experiment of class 11. So as you can see here from the virtual labs e-content, select the class you want to explore. So today I'm exploring class 11 biology. So when you click on the English medium, the subjects appear, click on biology. Here you see on the screen, the lab manual gets displayed on the left side, scroll down. So be prepared, uh, teachers, when before going to class, you can be prepared as to which experiment number you are going to do. So here I'm going to do experiment number 30, detection of sugar in urine. So PDF, when clicked on PDF, the lab manual is clearly displayed on the left side of the screen, it can be increased, you can zoom it and zoom in as per your convenience. Now, explanation resources, three icons are given. The first two are the, one is the animation video and one is the real lab video of the experiment. Now, when you click, remember this icon with a notebook picture, when you click on it, it will direct you to this page, scroll up and on the left side, a page will be displayed where lab experiment detection of sugar in urine. A link is provided, click on the link and it will direct you to the page. Virtual labs are created in collaboration with Amrita and CDAP. And on this page, all the tabs are displayed. Now it is up to the teacher to decide on how to you make use of these tabs. Right? Theory, as explained earlier, the explanation of complete explanation of the uh, experiment, lab experiment is given. Procedure, how to do the experiment is shown. Now you can use the animation first. Take 2 ml urine sample in a measuring cylinder from the urine sample bottle. No sugar in the urine, Bill's record. So as uh, explained earlier, theory and the procedure is explained in the animation. So the theory part and how to do the experiment with the materials required is, proceed, is explained in the animation part. So when, when you are in the class, if you display this screen uh, on the board, this itself makes the student understand what the concept is all about. You need not even explain to the students. So that is the specialty of the virtual, using the virtual labs in the class. Other than this, before going to the lab, now this is when you are in the class and you are teaching the concept, you can use the animation. But before going to the lab, if you want to demonstrate on how the children have to do the procedure, the kidney it's eliminates explained. the extra sugar. Now, the best part about the, about the video is the explanation about the concept is also given. Present in normal youth above normal level, the kidney precipitates such as burner, holding the test tube firmly with the condition B, dropper. So, as you saw, the whole explanation about the concept as well as how to perform this particular experiment in the real lab is given in the video. So if you show this to the students before going to the lab session, that is also, that also gives an idea of how the students are going to perform it in the lab. So it is actually a resource for the teachers that they can easily use to deliver with maximum effect. Now this is a simulator that can be used individually as well as as a group activity. However, whatever is the resources that is available to you in your school, you may utilize that. Now let's do the experiment. Now two solutions, Benedict's test as well as Spelling's test is given. Let's try with Benedict's first. Drag. And 
click. Now switch on the burner. Take it to the burner and again click. Wait for two minutes. It is all automatic. Now inference. Yellow color solution. Yellow color of the solution indicates the presence of one to two percent sugar in the urine. So in this one inference is given. So you can always quote it to the previous picture I told you that you can display on the screen and ask questions based on that. So this makes the class very interactive. So that is the positive about virtual labs. Now next is the Felling's test. Same, drag, drop. Solution A, again, drag and drop the solution B. Click on the burner. Carry the test tube to the burner and then click. Wait for two minutes. In between, keep shaking. It happens automatically and again, the inference is displayed. So this is how the whole simulator is done, which is, which can, this teacher can also use the simulator to explain the whole process in the class. So we, it, it makes the class uh, more effective and more interesting for the students. Then as explained, we have the Viva questions that can be answered as many times as the students want. So if they go wrong also, they can redo it. Resources are provided. So this is one experiment from biology. Now next moving on to English for class seven. Now English, uh, the specialty about English is this can be used in any classes. We have given it specifically for class seven, but it can be used in higher classes as well as lower classes according to the teacher's preference. So today we'll check singular and plural. Remember this icon. Click on the link. Takes you to the labs page. Theory is clearly explained. What is noun plurals and everything is explained here. So students, you can ask the students to go home and read and come. This is the topic that you're going to teach. So they can just go home and read and then come to the class the next day and you can ask them the questions. Procedure is clearly displayed on how to do it. Now lab. Enter your name. Start. Now instructions are given, theory is given, hints are given. So all the help that is required for a child to do this experiment independently without the help of teacher is also given. So these experiments, they can all, this, since these are accessible in Deeksha, easily accessible, I should say, and anytime, anywhere it can be used. So this can be also given as homework. Now here, so, uh, when you check the affordances, lots of tenses are given. Let me select simple past tense. The women ate the ice cream near Delhi. Now instructions are given. Change the highlighted words to the plural form and fill in the appropriate verb which matches the tense. Okay, so let me check whether the women dash the dash near Delhi. The question is the women ate the ice cream near Delhi. The women, let me see if I am right. I'm right. Feedback. If you get the green tick, that means I'm right. Again, let's check with the wrong one. The question, the brilliant teacher taught the important, taught the important women. The brilliant teacher brilliant teacher. Now here the options are you have to change teacher. Teachers taught okay this is also correct. What happens if I give a wrong answer just to check. So here 
when I checked in the wrong answer, automatically the children will get the feedback that the answer, the answer is wrong. Now, if this is displayed in the class during the English lessons, you can deliver the concepts very easily and thoroughly to the students, explaining where they went wrong. Instead of using the chalk and board approach, this is more effective. So that is why virtual labs were made available and that too in Deeksha so that it is accessible universally, not just for in, in, in Indian students, but also internationally. So please do make use of the virtual labs. There are a lot more experiments and you can access it anytime, anywhere. Give us homework, do it in the class individually, or if you have laptops available in the school, utilize that and please do check out the virtual labs and give your feedback. So that's all from my side. Thank you, Reshma ma'am, for sharing these necessary details with all our viewers. And I'm pretty sure that uh, with the areas that we have discussed so far, our views will be clear and the understanding would obviously be enhanced on why virtual labs are so important and you might try it on your own. If you have any queries, then of course our experts would be more than happy to take your queries and answer them. So uh, once again, I would like to take the moment to thank the three panelists who have been a part of the conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Yashpol. Thank you. Thank you, Simranji. Thank you, Shrikla, madam. And uh, thank you, Reshma Boss from Amrita Kriye. Thanks a lot. So all the viewers watching this session, I have a very special announcement for all of you. As you all know that it's 3rd of January, 2023rd. And right from today, we are commencing a special event that is known by the name Kala Utsav. So for the another one week, that is from 3rd January till 7th of January, 2023rd, the Department of School Education and Literacy, Ministry of Education, Government of India is organizing Kala Utsav to promote and showcase the artistic talent of school students. So let's watch a few glimpses of Kala Utsav. India is our land of diverse culture and glory. Let's showcase the art with the glimpses of its story. We hear the sound of music, we dance to Anglip Bells, paint a picture, make some toys rejoice. Let's do solo acting, let's dance, let's sing and paint. Some toys rejoice, the Children from every nook and corner will perform. Oh, great! We will have glimpses from each and every state. We hear the sound of music, we dance to and get best. Paint a picture, make some toys rejoice. We hear the sound of music, we dance to and get best. The picture make some toys rejoice. The loud song, the loud song, the loud song, the loud song. Kala Utsav, an initiative of the Department of School Education and Literacy, Ministry of Education, Government of India, announces Kala Utsav, organized by NCERT from 3rd to 7th January 2023. So we are looking forward to your active participation in Kala Utsav and do encourage all our school students who have been working so hard and uh, performing so beautifully in the event for all of you. So viewers, now it's time for me to wrap up this particular session, but stay connected because next up we have our special session that is teaching learning interventions for inclusive classroom, where we try to raise awareness about inclusive classroom setup. So stay connected to NCRT official and be tuned with e with their channels. We'll be right back within a few minutes. Namaskar. <laughs>